Hi, everybody. My name is Renata Gibson, and I'm one of the librarians here at Northwest Vista College. And I'm meeting with you guys today to talk about how to do history research, and specifically how to do history research on um, an upcoming project that you're going to be looking at an image and deciding, you know, what are the historical connections to this particular image. So what we're going to do in the next few minutes is talk about how to do history research, how to access the online databases, um, what other resources you might use, how to get help. And then also we're going to talk about how to cite things in Chicago style, which is the format that your professor is requiring for this course. Let me go ahead and just share my screen with you. Just one moment. So here we are at the Alamo College's uh, Northwest Vista College homepage, um, which we all know and well, very well. Um, the way that you always start research using library resources is by going to the library homepage. So we're going to go up here to menu, and then we're going to click on the library link. Now here we are on the library homepage, and I just want to quickly show you a few things. Um, at the top of the page, we have OneSearch, which is one of our databases to search. We have a section on library resources, which we're going to be talking about a few of these things. There's a whole section on library services. Um, our hours, which of course uh, will be changing for the fall, or possibly changing for the fall. So. Um, I also really want to point out um, this little section here that says chat now. This is the main way that you're getting help from the librarians while we are not on campus. So all the classes are online and um, you can't come into the library and get help anymore. But as long as the library is open, you can send us a little chat message and we will answer any of your research needs, any of your citation questions. Um, and if, even if you have general questions, you're not sure who to ask, we can help find you the answers. So let's go and scroll up a little bit now to library resources. Now, the very first uh, link we're going to go to is this one titled Research Guides. So I'm going to go ahead and click there. Now, these research guides are created as a way to kind of steer you towards the best resources for any kind of subject that you're researching. So, of course, you can see all the major subject areas here. Now we're going to scroll down to history. So when I click on history, you can see it expands and there's tons of research guides for history. Many of them are for specific classes, which is what we are going to be looking at. The one that you want to click on is History 1301-1302 Shaleen. That is your research guide. So that's the one we click on. And this is the guide that I'm going to be basing everything that we're talking about in the next few minutes on. Um, all the resources that we're going to be talking about are in this guide, and you can see on the left hand side of the page, this is how you navigate through the guide. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and click on the page titled library resources. Now, the reason why um, we really push you towards using library resources is because they are the most credible, the most reliable sources that you can find out there. And as students at Northwest Vista, you have access to over 200 online databases. So the online databases actually contain huge amounts of credible journal articles, magazine articles, images, videos, everything you can possibly imagine. And it's all been looked at and shown to be credible information. So the databases really make your researching easier. So in this particular guide for 1301 and 1302 history, I have created a guide to kind of show you the, um, the databases that will work best for your particular research on doing um, the story behind the picture. But many of the resources that we'll look at today will also cover just kind of general history research. Um, I should point out there's also a page on web resources. Um, I love Google. I use it every day, but you have to be careful what you use on Google. So what I've done here is I've tried to collect some credible, useful websites for any of your history research. Here's the citing page, which we'll look at kind of at the end of our session. There's a whole page on plagiarism. Now, of course, you hear about it from every professor you have. You do not want to plagiarize. Okay, so here's some kind of tips and, and uh, things to keep in mind when you're writing. Um, and on the very last page in the guide is actually your assignment for the story behind the picture, which is really what the focus of this Zoom session is. So if you don't, um, maybe you haven't looked at this yet, I'm not sure, but this gives you all the guidelines of what your professor is wanting. 
And so I've also kind of summarized it here, the five W's. So if we're gonna, you wanna take a look at that. Who made the picture? What is the picture about? Where is the picture depicting? When was the picture created? And why was it created? So these are all questions that you're gonna need to answer as you complete this assignment. And I'm gonna show you the library resources that will be best for this. So let's go back to the library resources page. And the very first database that we're going to be going into is this one titled Art Store. It's this very first one. So you click there and you are taken to the Art Store homepage. Now I am already logged in. It already recognizes that I am affiliated with NBC. Um, but those of you that click into Art Store for the first time will actually see a login screen. And it will ask you for your ACES ID, your banner ID, and you'll need to put those things in to gain access. The online databases are subscription databases, meaning that only you guys here affiliated with Northwest Vista have access to them, not just anybody can get into them. It's only because you're affiliated with the school. So Art Store is one of my favorite databases. Um, it is only images. There's over 2 million images in this database. Um, and what we've done, um, you, uh, your professor and I have actually created uh, an image group for you to start with. Okay, so we want you to look at these particular images as a starting point as possible images that you might use for your um, paper on the story behind the picture. So the way you access the groups is you go under browse and then you go to groups. And this actually lists a ton of different groups that are affiliated with all kinds of things at Northwest Vista. So the way that you find your group is you're actually going to type in Shaleen. So that is your professor's name, S-J-E-L-I-N, and then you're going to hit enter. And what comes up is actually just the image groups that have your professor's name attached to them. So you can see these first two, there's History 1302 images and History 1301 images. So whatever class you are in, you will click on the appropriate image group. I'm going to go ahead and click on History 1301 images. And the way our store works is it shows you your images in these little thumbnails. So you can kind of quickly scan and see which ones are going to be the ones that you want to be looking at. So you can see there's two pages. And they all depict famous people, famous battles, some are sculptures, some are paintings, um, some are posters. So you have a wide variety of images to choose from. Um, just for example's sake, I'm going to go ahead and click this one right here. You click on any of the thumbnails, they come up in a larger version, and you're able to see all the information about the image right here and the actual image itself. So what's really neat about Art Store is that as you put your mouse in and you scroll, you're able to zoom in on the painting. So you can see incredible details. You can see the texture of the canvas and the paint. Um, really, really amazing images. Um, and all the information about the image is attached to it. So you know exactly what you're looking at at all times. Um, this is in contrast to a Google image search, which can be a little bit tricky to, most of the time you don't know exactly what you're looking at. The image quality may be poor. So this is why going to Art Store is your starting point, okay? So you can see the creator, so this is the artist's name, John Singleton Copley. You can see the title. It's depicting Paul Revere, famous historical figure. The date it was completed, the materials used, the measurements. It lists the repository, which is where this actual painting lives in real life. And if we scroll down, you can see um, there's a whole bunch of words here that kind of describe what is being depicted in the painting. So when you're starting your research, you really need to be thinking, what are my search terms? What are the things that I'm going to be putting in the search box to get the information that I need? Now in Art Store, many times they give you search terms, basically. So you can see, you know, Paul Revere might be one of your search terms. Um, you can see he's holding a silver teapot. Um, that might be some kind of clue. Um, you can see also it's in the Museum of Fine Arts Boston, so that might be somewhere that you could look for information. You're basically just kind of trying to find ways of finding out information about this image. So definitely one of the things you would research would be the artist. Okay, why did he paint a portrait of Paul Revere? What kind of work did that artist do? 
Um, you would want to research Paul Revere, obviously, find out a little bit more about him. Um, and so those are your starting points. Okay, this is going to be how you start researching the story behind the picture. So if we go back to results, I can show you another one. Um, all of these images, like if we click on this one, all of these images give you clues on how to start your research. Since you're, the image is your starting point, that's all you have to go on. This is how you're going to be finding out how to find the information. So you would be able to look up the artist, John Trumbull. Um, maybe you would be able to find information about Battle of Bunkers Hill or General Warren. That would give you some information. Why was this a battle that um, someone felt the need to paint a portrait of? Okay, so, and again, you can zoom in and see incredible, incredible details. That's what's really amazing about Art Store is that the images are movable. You can zoom in and out, okay? So we go back to our results. And any of these images, just see which one speaks to you, which looks interesting to you, what might be a time or a person that was interesting to you, okay? So this is your starting point. We're going to go back to the research guide. We're going to go back into that tab. And you can see there's other databases listed here, okay? The next database we're going to look at is Oxford Art Online. So when I click there, it takes me to Oxford Art Online, which is where you can research any information about the artist or the, the, the person that created the artwork that you're looking at. So I'm going to go ahead and put in John Singleton Copley. Okay. And then I click search. And the way this database works, it's set up pretty differently but it comes up in a list of results. And just like any list of results, that first one is gonna be the most in-depth, the most, the one that you wanna be looking at first, okay? So we're gonna click on his name. And then you're taken into a very detailed overview of this artist, birth and death dates, um, nationality. Um, in this very first paragraph, you can, you can read basically just a very quick overview. What kind of artist was he? Where did he work? What kinds of things did he paint? Um, and, Throughout this entry, it will also give you a little history of his life, a history of what was going on while he was working. Um, all of this is going to be very useful to you in this assignment. Okay. And basically, this is an online uh, version of an encyclopedia entry. So it's going to be a credible, reliable information. Okay. Now, looking at the top here, and this is kind of shadowing ahead to what we're going to be talking about with our citations. Um, some of the citation information is here, but in order to find all of it, we actually need to go to the top of the page here where there's these tools. And you can see there's several different tools here. If we click on the little pencil, it's gonna pop up in a new window. Now it defaults to APA, but there's also MLA in Chicago. So let's go to Chicago. And you can see this is all the information that you would need to cite it correctly. Now you cannot just copy and paste this into your citations list. That would not be correct format wise, but it gives you the pieces. So you can see here's the author. You can see here's the title of the encyclopedia entry. Grove Art Online is actually the name of the encyclopedia. 2003 is the date it was published. Um, you can see the access date, 17th of August, but it would of course be whatever date you access it. And then here is the URL that you would be able to use for this citation too. So even though you can't copy and paste it, in a few minutes we're going to go into Noodle Tools and I'll show you how you can use this information to create a correct works cited page in Chicago format. So we'll go ahead and close this. And we're going to go back to the guide. And we're going to look at another database here on our library resources page called US History and Context. This is a history class, so you definitely want to be using a history database to do some of your research. Um, this is one of the most useful ones that you will use um, throughout your time here at Northwest Vista. And it's set up the same way. Here's your basic search box. So I'm going to go ahead and search for Paul Revere. Now he is the historical figure that is depicted in that painting. And you can see that in the list, his name comes up in bold at the top of the list. That means that there's a topic page on Paul Revere. 
anytime you can look at a topic page on your person or battle or whatever it is you're researching, that's what you want to do. So we're going to go ahead and click on his name here, and then we'll be directed to the topic page on Paul Revere. So all these topic pages are set up the same way. There's an overview at the top. This gives you just a little paragraph of the overview of his life, but if you click read more, it will give you much more information. And as you scroll down, you can see that there's several entries on Paul Revere. There's journal articles, there's featured content, which these look like more biographical information on him. Um, there's primary sources. So these are actual primary sources written about Paul Revere or by Paul Revere. Um, there's more uh, kind of reference sources, which are encyclopedias and that sort of thing. Um, biographies, there's images here, videos, radio stories, newspaper, magazines, all in one place. And you can even see at the bottom, it gives you related topics. So these might be other topic pages that would be useful for your research as well. Now all of these, you can click on the title and it will give you access to the full text. So if I go ahead and just click on any one of these, I'm taken directly into the full text. Okay, and this is set up in much the same way as uh, all the databases are set up in a similar way and that they always have a little site option somewhere. So you can see at the top of the page where my cursor is, if I click on site, it's going to tell me the citation information. Now this also has a Chicago option, but again, you do not want to just copy and paste this because you don't know if it's correctly formatted. Unfortunately, the databases are not always correct in their citation formats. All the information is correct though. So you can see here, um, the title of the encyclopedia entry is just Paul Revere's name, and it's from Encyclopedia of World Biography Online. This is the publisher right here, Detroit, Michigan, Gale. It was published in 1998. The name of the database is Gale in Context US History. It gives today as the access date, and then it gives you the URL. And again, everything in the databases is credible, reliable information. It's there, the databases are there to make your researching easier. So let's go ahead and go back to the research guide. Again, this is kind of our touch point here. This is where we're starting from, okay? Another uh, database is Biography in Context. Now it's the same idea, it's just, it's actually looking for biographical information on people, so that might be useful. Um, we're gonna go ahead and go to another page in the guide um, the web resources page. So lots of these websites may be useful. Now, when you are looking at websites, you always want to be kind of thinking about, is it a good website? Is it a credible website? Are the people behind it, you know, do they have the credentials and the, the degrees to be writing about the topic? Okay, you don't want to just use somebody's blog entry on Paul Revere, okay? The last thing that we're going to be talking about today is citing. So, you're gonna go ahead and click on the citing page here. And um, Noodle Tools is our citation um, software that we have for you guys. And Noodle Tools is great uh, because it actually does all of the formatting for you. You need to know the parts of your citation that actually does your citation for you and exports it to Word, okay? Now what I've done on this page is kind of show you what Chicago style uh, is meant to look like for those of you that have never had to do it. So some things to kind of look at here. Um, there's also overviews of the Chicago style. And on the right hand side of the page here are useful things to keep in mind as you're citing. Okay, so um, when we cited this entry in Oxford Art Online on, on John Singleton Copley, the artist, um, that is going to be actually a, um, ref, a reference source. So it's an encyclopedia entry. But if you're citing something from um, art store the image database in in noodle tools um, it's actually called a work of visual art okay so just keep these tips in mind as you're citing because they can help you in terms of knowing what you're citing that's one of the tricky parts about citing things that are from online sources is many times it's confusing what you're actually looking at because everything looks the same okay so I'm going to just go ahead and click on the noodle tools link here 
And the way Noodle Tools works is it has you set up an account. So for those of you that are new to Noodle Tools, you will have to go down here and click register and then fill out this short form. That way you can actually save all of the information that you want to put on your Works Cited page within Noodle Tools, okay? But I'm actually gonna go ahead and sign in so that you can see what things are supposed to be looking like. So here is your kind of home page within Noodle Tools. It's your projects page. Now I have a bunch of projects saved here because this is, I've been using it for so long. Now those of you that are new to Noodle Tools will not have all of these. It will be an empty page. So the way that you always want to start any of your work cited pages within Noodle Tools is to go in that upper left corner where it says new project. And then it has you give it a project title. Now this can be anything you like. It does not have to be something that makes sense to anyone but you. It's purely for your filing purposes. So if we wanted to name it history paper fall. Maybe. And then you have various citation styles to choose from. Now in this case, your professor is having you do Chicago, but you also have MLA and APA. You always wanna check with your professor to see what citation format they want you to use. Um, it automatically chooses advanced as the citation level, and that's what you wanna keep it as. Those are college level citations, so don't mess with that part of it. And you click submit, and you're taken to the page that's called the dashboard. Now this is where you can do all kinds of advanced noodle tools things, um, which will be a whole nother video <laughs> to make. Um, really all you're concerned about um, using noodle tools at this point is adding your sources to your works cited page. So you actually go to the top of the page here where it says sources and you click on it. And this is actually how you start adding your sources. Okay, so what I always like to do is I like to have noodle tools open and I also like to have all my other tabs open as well with my sources. So as I'm going along and I'm doing my research, I can be adding in my information as I go. Nothing is worse than working for hours on a project and then realizing that you have a whole nother two or three hours just to do your work cited page. Okay, so I always suggest that you have Noodle Tools open as you go and then you're able to add your sources as you go. So I'm gonna say, um, for an example, that we're actually gonna be citing this image of Paul Revere in our Works Cited page. So I'm gonna keep this open here and I'm gonna toggle back and forth between Noodle Tools and Art Store. So I'm gonna go back into my Noodle Tools and the way that you start adding sources within Noodle Tools is you click on this little green button in the upper left corner that says New Source. So we're gonna click on that. It asks you a question Kind of help you figure out what you're citing. First they're asking you where is it. Now if, if we're in art store we're going to choose database because all the things that I showed you today were databases. So we're going to go ahead and click on database and then now it's asking what is it. Okay so we're citing an image but within, within Noodle Tools uh, works of art images are called works of visual art. It's right in the central column kind of near the bottom so we're gonna go ahead and click on work of visual art. And then this is where Noodle Tools walks you through adding the pieces, okay? So the very first thing it's asking you for is the URL. And you'll notice when I click in this field, this little I for information button comes up. If you're not sure what something is, if you click on that little I, Noodle Tools will tell you what it is and what you need to be putting in there. So the very first thing we click on is URL. If we go back into our image here, now where normally you would want to go to the top here and choose the URL from the URL bar, okay? Now, I, you do not wanna be doing that within the databases. The databases always give you a shorter, prettier link to put into your works cited page, okay? And in this case, in Art Store, it's right here, right under, right where my cursor is pointing. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and then right click and copy it. I'm gonna go back into Noodle Tools and then I can right click and paste, okay? Now, the next thing it's asking me for is the name of the database. Now, all of the databases are entered in here, so if you start typing in Art Store, you can see, here it is. And it's formatted funny because art is capitalized. 
in uppercase. That's just how our store is written. Now it's saying accession order number. We don't need that. Okay, we can leave that blank. So the artist name, if we go back in here, is under creator. Okay, so John Singleton Copley. So he has a first, middle, and last name. So we're going to go back in here. Um, you can always copy and paste it if you want to make sure that you're spelling it correctly, but I know how to spell this one. So I'm just going to type it in. Um, the next thing it's asking you for is the type of art. Now it has several different options here. So we know that this is a painting. We can see that this is a painting. You can also see under materials, it says oil on canvas. So we know that that's a painting. So we're just going to leave that as painting. Um, if it didn't have a type of art, you could put a description of the medium. But you guys won't have that problem with this. The next thing is the title of the painting. So we go back in here under title, and here it is right here, Paul Revere. Okay. And again, copy and paste is your friend. I just happen to know how to spell these things, so I'm just typing them in. Um, year that it was created. Okay, so we have under date, we have 1768. Okay. Museum, library, or private collection. Now this one actually has it listed. It may not have it listed. Okay. Um, it was actually Museum of Fine Arts Boston right here. Okay. Now if you don't have that information, that's okay. You can leave it blank. And then it actually breaks it down by city here. Um, and that's it. We've entered in all the information that we need to. So we can go up to the top of the page and click save. And it's actually sending it to our works cited page. And here we go. Here is our citation. Okay. Now what's really also great about Noodle Tools is that to the right of each of your citations, you'll see an options button. And if you click on that, like let's say you needed to change the something. Maybe you saw that you misspelled something. You could edit it. You could copy it if you were using it for another Works Cited page. You could delete it if you ended up not using that source. It's also going to show you the footnote format. Okay, so Chicago uses footnotes. So if you click on footnote format, it's actually going to show you um, what your footnote should look like. And then it gives you a little overview of footnotes, Chicago formatting, how you need to be doing that, okay? But again, as you guys are going along, of course, don't ever forget that you can contact the library for help, okay? I wanna stress that, um, especially if you've never done Chicago uh, formatting before. Um, please don't feel like you're alone. You can reach out to your professor, you can reach out to the library. Um, we're more than happy to help you. Now, as you go along and you keep adding sources, you go through the same steps. You click on new source, and it asks you where is it and what is it, and then you fill out the form, okay? And every time you enter a source in here, it's saved. You don't have to worry about backing it up. Now, when you are done with your Works Cited page and you want to have it look correctly formatted, this is not what it would look like when you turned it into your professor, you would go up here to print, and you could either export to Word or export to Google Docs, whichever you found to work best or whichever you prefer. So I'm going to just go ahead and click print export to Word. And it actually comes down as a document down here. I'm going to double click it. And it's sending it to Word and formatting it for us. Okay, so you can see I only have one source listed here, but if you had multiple sources, it would be put in alphabetical order. The spacing is correct. The indentations are correct. Everything is good. This is ready to uh, be printed uh, out or copy and pasted um, onto your document that you're going to be submitting um, and you're good to go. Okay, so that is a very quick intro to Noodle Tools. Uh, please uh, contact us if you need more help as you're going along, which you may. Um, that's why we're here. We're here to help you. Okay, even though we're not physically on campus right now, we're still here remotely. So we're here to help you. So I'm going to go back to the guide. Um, just remember that this is kind of your starting point and we access this from the library homepage and we'll also have a link probably in your Canvas classroom. So um, you won't be able to lose this research guide.
Okay. Um, I do want to um, show you one more time the library homepage, and all the way at the bottom is the chat area. Okay. This is going to be how you get research help, how you get help with your citations, any kind of help. Okay. I hope that you have fun doing this project. It's a great assignment um, and doing any kind of history research as you go through the semester. Um, we're here to help you. Um, good luck and have fun, guys. Bye.